In rehab and fitness, we are always looking for exercises that get the most bang for our buck. We might be short on time and need an exercise that maximizes results, or maybe we want to strengthen certain muscles with minimal activation from others. What's going on everybody? Dr. Tony Camella here, physical therapist with E3 Rehab. Today, we're gonna to be exclusively talking about the upper body and how closed chain exercises like planks, push-ups, inverted rows, etc., might offer a better return on your investment. So whether you're someone dealing with shoulder pain or you're just looking to maximize training and performance for the upper body, understanding the differences between open and closed chain exercises is gonna be extremely valuable. Now, a good starting point is first understanding what we mean when we say open versus closed chain exercises. During open chain exercises, the distal segment, like your hand or leg, moves the resistance. Examples are a seated leg extension or bench press exercise. In contrast, during closed chain exercises, the distal segment is fixed on the floor or object, and our body primarily provides the resistance, such as in a squat or push-up. Now, these are usually discussed in the context of the lower body, but today I'm gonna to give you four reasons why closed chain exercises should be a bigger part of the conversation when we're talking about rehab, training, or performance for the upper body. Reason number one, rotator cuff and trunk activation. When we think about rotator cuff activation, usually rotation and arm raise variations come to mind. All open chain options. These are all great. And in fact, we even devoted an entire video to those, which you can check out afterward. But did you know that closed chain exercises also activate the rotator cuff? And sometimes they do it even more so than their open chain counterparts. In 2019, Posey and colleagues found just that. They compared six closed chain exercises to six open chain exercises. Some examples include comparing a push-up to a cable press, a chin-up to a lat pull-down, and an inverted row to a cable row. They found significantly more shoulder, scapular, and trunk muscular activation with the closed chain options. These include the infraspinatus, middle and lower trap, and the external oblique and erector spinae muscles. We also see that a simple progression of upper body weight bearing leads to an increase in infraspinatus and supraspinatus activation. This progression was shown in a 2003 study by Yule and colleagues. Their progression moved from quadruped to tripod to pointer or bird dog to a tall plank to a feet elevated plank and finally to a one arm plank. While this is relatively straightforward and probably intuitive for some, it does offer a simple progression to utilize. As Posey states, these results have important clinical application because exercises that maximize activity of the rotator cuff and scapula are recommended for patients with shoulder dysfunctions and rotator cuff tears. Now the Posey article already showed us that these closed chain variations elicit more trunk activation. This is shown in further studies, one of them being by Kalateyud and colleagues, which focused exclusively on upper body pushing exercises. The main exercises tested were a bench press, push-up, banded push-up, suspended push-up, and a standing cable press. They found that trunk activation, so rectus abdominis and external oblique, were much higher during suspended push-up and regular push-up variations compared to bench press and cable press variations. Reason number two, strength and hypertrophy. We're gonna keep this one short. At the end of the day, if you are looking to build muscle mass or strength, there are a lot of factors to consider. But if we're just looking at closed chain versus open chain, we really don't see that one is superior to the other. For example, in the previous article mentioned, pectoralis major, anterior deltoid, and tricep activation was found to be similar between bench press at 85% of one rep max and the banded push-up. This really just means we need to make an exercise appropriately challenging if we are looking to maximize results. In the context of the upper body, the bench press is great, but don't sleep on push-ups. On our podcast, Greg Knuckles said it best. I would say for probably 
80% of the population, good high quality push-ups are hard for them, like really hard. And that can be their primary like horizontal pressing exercise. Reason number three, serratus anterior. The serratus anterior is a popular muscle running from our ribs to the underside of our shoulder blade. It is responsible for protracting or separating our shoulder blades and upwardly rotating them. For a variety of reasons, it is often the muscle of interest in various rehab and fitness programs. Both in the Posey and the Calateyud articles, they saw more serratus anterior activation during closed chain variations compared to open chain. They also found a more favorable upper trap to serratus anterior ratio, meaning closed chain options generally activated the serratus anterior more and the upper trapezius less. Now this might be a consideration for someone that is dealing with a more irritable neck and the goal is to minimize upper trap activation and maximize the use of the shoulder. To take this a step further, we can compare this activation when using stable versus unstable surfaces. When using a stable condition compared to an unstable condition, serratus anterior has been shown to be activated about the same, if not slightly more, and the upper trapezius less. This would mean push-ups from the floor would be a better option than a TRX or ring push-up if we are looking to maximize serratus anterior and minimize upper trapezius. And finally, we have the push-up plus, the popular kid when it comes to serratus activation. A systematic review and meta-analysis looking at the push-up plus found two major findings. First, it confirms stable surfaces are more favorable for serratus anterior to upper trapezius activation. And secondly, out of all the ways we can perform the push-up plus, we get the best activation when we have our arms straight, slightly out in front, so our shoulder angle is about 110 to 120 degrees of flexion, and if tolerated, we lift the opposite foot to load the desired shoulder maximally. We are finishing the discussion off with applications into performance. While this might not apply to everyone, it is still a valuable part of the conversation. Because closed chain exercises don't look very sport specific like throwing, we might tend to shy away from them when applying them to the programs of different athletes. In a study by Procopi and colleagues, they compared a closed chain to an open chain exercise resistance program and how it impacted performance measurements. Now as a disclaimer, this was a small sample size of only 14 collegiate softball players, but the results are still really interesting. After completing either program three times a week for 12 weeks, the closed chain exercise resistance training group showed greater improvements in throwing velocity, external rotation peak torque, and external rotation and shoulder flexion power. The authors concluded strength and conditioning coaches can be comfortable implementing upper body closed chain exercises into a training program without sacrifices in maximal force production. The concept of closed chain exercises comes up a lot more frequently when we're talking about the lower body, but hopefully now you understand that there's a lot of value to utilizing them for the upper body as well. Now, programming doesn't really need to be strictly biased towards just open chain or just closed chain, but rather we can utilize both of them in a comprehensive program in order to produce favorable outcomes. If you guys like this video, tap that like button, share with a friend, and make sure you check out our other great content, blogs, podcasts, rehab programs over at e3rehab.com. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.